Hi, Gary Stearman. It's the 22nd of May, a Wednesday. Today we're going to talk about Syria in prophecy once again, and the issues in Syria today are top of the line, top drawer issues, as you will see. Uh, in Zechariah uh, chapter 8, verse 18, the word of the Lord of hosts came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. So this is good news coming from Zechariah. And he talks about uh, the fast of the 17th of Tammuz, the fast of Tisha B'Av, the fast of Tzom Gedalia, and the fast of the 10th of Tevet, all four of which are very, very dark, dark uh, fasts in the Jewish calendar. But the Lord here is speaking prophetically of a day when those four dark fasts will actually become feasts, cheerful feasts. And so we know by this that the Lord is speaking of the future, not uh, of what's going on in Israel right now. And he goes on then in the next chapter, chapter 9, to give a burden. Now, a burden is a prophecy uh, of destruction. <clears throat> chapter 9, verse 1, the burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach, Damascus shall be the rest thereof when the eyes of man, as of all the tribes of Israel, shall be toward the Lord. So the opening of this prophecy is the the judgment of the nations surrounding Israel, in particular uh, the, the uh, nations to Israel's north. This would be Lebanon and Syria. It, uh, Old Aramea, actually, is what it would be. <clears throat> Second verse says, And Hamath shall border thereby, Tyrus, Sidon, though it be very wise. Tyrus did build herself a stronghold. Heap together silver as dust, and find gold as the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will cast her out, and he will smite the power, smite her power in the sea, and she shall be devoured with fire. Ashkelon shall see it in fear. Gaza shall also see it and be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for her expectation, shall be ashamed. And the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. So we, we go through these verses... Uh, talking about the lands to the north of Israel and then along Israel's southwestern border, border, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Gaza. These are precisely the areas affected today by the Muslim Brotherhood and by the events that are transpiring in Syria. And we have some very interesting news out of Syria, Old Aramea and Damascus. Uh, should you read the Bible, that, those are the words you will find to denote Syria. The headline is, Obama secretly approves top-of-the-line anti-tank arms for Syrian rebels. That's an amazing headline. Our president, that is our executive branch, has uh, quote-unquote approved top-of-the-line anti-tank arms for Syrian rebels. Now, when we read about what those arms are, how they are being used, and who is really supplying the arms, it is downright eye-opening. Monday, May 21st, UN Secretary Ban Ki-moon said he was extremely troubled about the risk of an all-out civil war in Syria and was concerned about the outbreak of related violence in Lebanon. He spoke as dozens of Syrians died in clashes, mostly in the towns of Aleppo and Idlib, and also in the town of Homs. Of course, Homs has been under siege now for literally months, while two people were killed in Beirut in a spillover of Syrian bloodshed. So now this whole thing is leaking over into Lebanon. Well, we just read about this. Uh, the burden of the Lord in the land of Hadrak, Damascus, will be the rest thereof, and then Tyre and Sidon and Hamath. All of these are the territories of modern Lebanon. It's happening, it's unfolding exactly as described by Zechariah in the ninth chapter of his prophecy. So now Aleppo, Idlib, and Homs are uh, still under siege, and the city of Beirut is beginning to experience a little spillover from the battle. Sunday, 
at the NATO summit in Chicago, uh, Secretary Anders Fogh Rasmussen said firmly that the alliance has, quote, no intention of taking military action against President Bashar Assad's regime. But he said nothing about the individual military action, individual NATO members translating their concern about the escalating violence in Syria into military action. So uh, we have NATO beginning to take covert military action. Above all, he did not explain why Syrian Army heavy T-72 tanks have in recent days started bursting into flames on the open roads. Now, the T-72 is the top of the line Russian tank, which is supplied to Syria. Uh, anytime you read about uh, uprisings going on in Syria and Lebanon, uh, particularly as you move over uh, through Iraq into Iran, you're talking about Russian weaponry being used. Uh, Bashar al-Assad has used the Russian T-72 tank uh, for a long time. The T-72 is uh, a very tough tank, and suddenly they're starting to burst into flames. Uh, military sources from Debka file, and I'm reading Debka file, dateline May 22nd, disclosed the cause. The Syrian rebels have received their uh, first, quote unquote, third generation anti-tank weapons. The 9K115-2 Metis M and the Cornet E, they are supplied, and here's the bottom line to all this, they are supplied by Saudi and Qatari intelligence agencies following, following a secret message from President Barack Obama advising them uh, to up the military stake in an effort to oust Assad. And so now it's out in the open. Our government has undertaken action to kick uh, Bashar al-Assad out of office. Uh, Al-Assad is at direct odds with our allies, the kings of Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. King Abdullah and, and uh, uh, our executive branch, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia and our executive branch are known to be in very close contact on a daily basis. And now uh, the king has done more than talk. He is supplying uh, Syrian rebels with third generation, as they're called, uh, weapons that are knocking out Russian T-72 tanks. It seems like uh, a very short time now until ba Bashar al-Assad is kicked out of office. Of course, the Islamic Brotherhood wants to take over after Assad leaves office. And what will happen when they do? Well, this is from Israel Today magazine, dateline May 21, which is yesterday. And I quote, there was an early hope and speculation as the Arab Spring kicked off last year that the ostensibly pro-democracy uprisings would lead to better relations between Israel, Israel and its neighbors. However, things have changed. Syria is now following a path similar to the Egyptian path, with leading uh, rebel officials making clear that should they seize control of Syria, Israel will continue to be regarded as Syria's number one enemy. And there you have it. Uh, if Bashar al-Assad is, is kicked out of, of leadership in Syria to be replaced by the Islamic Brotherhood, all this will mean is uh, we'll have a repeat of 1967, the Six-Day War, the Syrians to the north, the Jordanians uh, to the east, the Egyptians to the south. Uh, we'll, be, we'll all be making war against Israel and just as it happened in, in 1967, uh, Israel is going to have to rise to her full potential in order to ward off what appears to be an, an almost certain enemy assault. This is why it's, it's very interesting to read the prophets because we have here Zechariah 9, uh, the burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest of thereof. Uh, these areas are going to be destroyed. And the credit for that destruction is going to go to God, although Israel will be the one acting, uh, I think, on behalf of the Lord to destroy Damascus, to destroy the lands just to the north of Israel, 
Uh, and of course, Ezekiel has a long, a whole chapter devoted to the destruction of Egypt in the latter days. So we are looking at the development of uh, what some would call World War III, what others would call a repeat of the 1967 Six-Day War. So keep looking up, everybody. Uh, it can't be very long, and uh, I think the Lord really is uh, coming soon. Keep looking up.